Hi everybody, so as promised, here is an update which I find uh, particularly positive about Myra Shabazz. You may remember Myra is a 14-year-old Christian Pakistani girl. Uh, she was kidnapped at gunpoint by three men. She was forced into an Islamic marriage. She's been raped repeatedly. Uh, she had uh, like blackmail footage of her being raped. Um, she, excuse me, she was made to sign papers and stuff like that. So anyway, here's a quick update. According to The Nation, the Lahore High Court has ordered police in Pakistan to ensure the security of Myra Shabazz, a 14-year-old Christian girl who was abducted and forcefully married to a Muslim man in April. Earlier this week, International Christian Concern, which is uh, found at persecution.org and is a reliable source of Christian uh, information, reported that Shabazz escaped the custody of, a, of her alleged husband and has gone into hiding with her mother and siblings, as I uh, reported to you last week. On April the 28th, uh, she was abducted at gunpoint by Mohammed Nakash and two accomplices whilst walking home in Medina. Um, and according to witnesses, the abductors forced her into a car and fired gunshots as they fled the scene. Uh, Aid to the Church in Need reports that Shabazz told police she was drugged, raped and forced to sign blank papers that were later used by Nakash's marriage certificates and proof of age. Uh, and conversion, actually, a conversion certificate. Shabazz also claims that Nakash filmed her being raped and has threatened to release the video online if she um, resists him. So, according to, um, according to this report, yeah, so she's run away from her abductor where she was ordered back from the courts. If you remember, the first court advised or ordered that she be removed to a place of safety, i.e. a women's shelter, and then a higher court um, unfortunately uh, deemed that she should be returned to her abductor and now she has fled the court again is now asking the police to ensure her safety so that is um, an absolute blessing and an answer to prayer for her mother I'm sure um, and for all of you who I I hope that you continue to pray for individual and uh, groups like all Christians in Pakistan especially the women and girls please I don't um, you know, demote the place of boys and men and their persecution, not at all, but they are far less likely to be abducted in terms of arranged marriages, as is obvious. Please also pray for Pakistan, for Ethiopia, for Chad, Niger, Burkina Faso, uh, China, uh, Sudan, Somalia, all places where Christians are persecuted mercilessly and remorselessly. If you imagine, I mean, growing up in the West, you, you may be forgiven for not ever having known that this stuff is going on, especially if you listen to the mainstream as your main source of information. But I promise you it is going on. And it's in God's plan for these people. Romans 8, 28 says that all things work to the good of those who are called according to his purpose and who love God. So we know that these situations are in hand. And yet we also know that when one part of the church suffers, we all suffer and we are the church. So please do continue to pray for them. If you have the time or resources, uh, money is not the only thing that these charities are in need of, although they are in need of it because they, f they provide uh, financial support to widows and families of displaced people who are persecuted. But apart from money, prayer is our most valuable uh, form of bargaining, as it were, and also time, voluntary roles, um, social media awareness making videos stuff like that so please do look into international christian concern also you can become a volunteer to go around and speak in churches or to congregations or to non-christians which i find is equally helpful so anyway god bless and i'll see you for another uh, story of christian persecution sorry very soon bye bye